Today we're going to be taking a look at the chi-squared goodness of fit test in Python through a few different examples. But we'll be utilizing the libraries of NumPy as well as SciPy to jump through a manual example. And then I'll show you literally one line of code that can automate this full process. But before we jump into the Python code, I want to go over a little bit more context of what exactly is the chi-squared goodness of fit test and when you can use it. All right, so the chi-squared goodness of fit test. Uh, this test assesses if the observed frequencies for a single categorical variable match expected frequencies for a known distribution. Uh, this is also commonly used with uniform distributions, although it does allow for other distribution types. But uh, this example I'm going to go through on the slides is going to be uniform distribution. And if, if you're not familiar with uniform distributions, great. I do have a video on the channel talking about it, but I think you should be able to grasp the concept with this example. So here's the null and alternative hypothesis first. So the null hypothesis, the observed frequencies match the expected frequencies based on the hypothesized distribution. The observed data follows the specified distribution. Alternative hypothesis, the observed frequencies do not match the expected frequencies, meaning they differ significantly from the hypothesized distributions and the observed data does not follow the specified distribution, right? So here's our example. This, if we take a look at a six-sided die, determine if it's fair, right? Uh, no matter what sides one through six, it's gonna be uniform distribution because the probability of landing a fair die on any side is gonna be exactly the same. So if you roll the dice, you know, 120 times, you should be getting around 20 for each side, right? If you had exactly uniform, you would get 20 each side, but uh, you get that over a large amount of times rolling the dice, right? And uh, I've talked about this also, I believe, I can't remember if this is an exact example or not, but the law of large numbers. Uh, so as we test this more and more times, you'll get to that one sixth probability uh, for inside. But regardless, here's our observed rules, uh, one through six. We have 22, 20, 18, 21, 19, and 20. So all fairly close to 20, but let's see if our chi-squared goodness of fit test uh, works out well here, right? And if the dice fair, each space should appear about 20 which I mentioned. So step one is to state the hypothesis, right? The null hypothesis is the die is fair. Each number has an equal probability of occurring. The alternative, the die is not fair. At least one number has a different probability of occurring. Uh, step two is gonna be calculating the, the chi-squared test statistic. Uh, that is this formula right over here. So observed minus expected squared uh, divided by expected, and we're gonna sum all those up. So we're gonna do that for each of these faces. There's six faces. Uh, so we get all those values, and then at the very end, we get the chi-squared uh, statistic is going to be 0 0.5. All right, so step three is determine the degrees of freedom. So all we have to do is take the numbers of category minus one. So since there is six categories, right, six sides of the die, minus one. Here. Now we find the p-value, so the p-value of the chi-squared statistic of 0 0.5 with five degrees of freedom is 0 0.992. So the results, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? The die is fair. Each number has an equal probability of occurring. And again, if we had under uh, 0 0.05, uh, we would reject the null hypothesis. But since we had such a large p-value, we failed to reject it. All right, uh, with this background out of the way, make sure to grab your Python notebook and we're gonna go through some examples. All right, and now what we wanna do is find our p-value. So let's say p-value equals one minus chi square minus CDF, put in our chi squared stat over here, and then pass in our degrees of freedom. And it should be stats like that. Apologize. And then uh, we can print out our p-value. And we've, we fail to reject the null hypothesis on the side of things, right? We already went over this example, but all the sides are fair based off of the data that we have over here, 22, 20, 18, 21, 19, and also 20. Uh, the p-value was significantly less, like it was 0 0.0004, right? Less than that alpha value, then we would reject it. But uh, this is pretty healthy, right? We know that we have a fair die. But now I want to show you guys a shortcut, right? So we're going to go to example two and shortcut. Now, I did a lot of work to get this result, but we can make it a bit easier. So 
we'll say is we'll have observed roles like this equal and what am i do because i'm gonna grab these bodies right so we have these and then what i'll have next is our expected roles so we'll say expected roles equals and we'll say 20 times six right each of these should be 20 for each six sides and then all we have to do and i don't know why these are taking a little bit longer but we'll get over here is chi square stats also our p value shortcut although i don't recommend you putting p value shortcut but just to show you guys uh we'll put chi square which actually needs to be stats square and then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna say our observation so f underscore observations equals and that's gonna be our observed rules and then what we'll have is our expected so f expect and then just pass in your expected rules and now we get both of these values here right one line of code versus all of this thank you sci-fi for making things easy um so what i'll go over here is we'll print out our chi square stat just to make sure we get the same right you get 0 0.5 which if you look above we also got 0 0.5 so that's looking good uh let's see if our p value is the same so we go over here to get our p value with our shortcut and 09921 09921 so uh i prefer this method right observed roles expected roles and uh this over here, the expected roles like this, just to show you guys, if you aren't familiar, that'd be like the same as just writing this, right? And just keep going forward. Um, just, it's a lot faster doing that. All right, um, let's look at a sport example. So what I'm gonna do is uh, a basketball example. I don't really do many basketball examples here on the channel. So I think we are due for one. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at different types of basketball shots. Uh, so we're going to take a look at three pointers, mid range layups, and also free throws. And, uh, let's start off with that. So what we're going to start off with is our observed values. So we can see observed equals, and we'll just do an NP array this time. Send 25, 30, 20, and also 25. And again, that lines up. First is gonna be our three pointer. So let me make some notes. So we'll say first is gonna be our three pointers. Then next is gonna be mid range shots. Then we're gonna have layups. And then we're gonna have free throws, right? So those are the four that we have over here. And then our expected on this side, I think. So three pointers, let's say it's 30% of successful shots. 30% uh, mid range, we'll say is 40%. So that's 70. And then uh, we'll say layups is 20%. And then free throws is 10%. I don't know if that's accurate with professional uh, basketball, but for this video, it's fine. And so the one example above was uniform, right? This one is not, right? 40% of the shots are mid-range and only 10% are free throws. So a little bit of a wrinkle in comparison to the last one, right? So what we're going to do now is do our total counts. So we'll say total counts. What we're gonna do now is say total counts equals sum of our observed, right? And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna make our expected. So we'll expect it over here. We're gonna say that's equal to np.array. And inside over here, what we're gonna do is have 0 0.3 times our total counts. And then we're going to have 0 0.4 times our total counts. And then, then 0 0.2 times our total counts. And finally, 0 0.1 times our total count, right? And all we're doing is getting expected. And to explain the code here, right? We have all these observed, right? 25 plus 30, that's 55 plus 20, that's 75, plus 25, 100, right? Basic math for this video. Uh, total counts can be 100, and then we're getting our expected, right? So 0 0.3 times 130%, right? 
0 0.4 times 100, 40%, 340, right? 0 0.2 times 120, which is 20%, and free throws 10, right? And then we're comparing it to these observed values. So now what we're doing is creating an array based off of uh, our total count times the percentage that we're expected. Hopefully that makes sense. And then all I have to do is run our test again. So we can go over here. That, and I'll just put BB at the end for basketball. And then we'll have expected. And maybe we should put like observed shots and then expected shots. It doesn't really matter. Um, what we can do now is print out these, right? So let's print this out. And uh, for P value, in this case, check that out almost zero. So in this instance, we are going to reject our null hypothesis and go with the alternative hypothesis. So, and we could usually go with an if else statement here at the very end. I typically do that for these videos, but I didn't for this example code. But yeah, I mean, that was our uh, goodness of fit test. Really makes it easy. Know your observed and expected values. And if you don't know your exact expected values, sum up your NP array and then multiply it out by the percentages like I did right over here. And it turns out to be one line. But if you already have your observed expected, literally three lines of code. Otherwise, just add a little bit more. And yeah, that's essentially it on the Python coding side of things. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on the chi-squared goodness of fit test. And if you learned something new, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, if you want to continue learning statistics with the help of Python, I have a few videos linked down below in the description as well as a playlist right over here. So make sure to check those 